and with that, I welcome you to a new episode, a new start into a new season. And we start the season with Mark, Gra Mark Grave, Bernhard II of Nordmark. I'm uh, sorry. Oh god. <clears throat> so, we start now as a son of Mark Graf Lothar Udo, the ill ruler. And it will be a ruler who goes down in history, that is to be sure. Who are we playing? We are playing him, who is a imbecile. This character is a droning imbecile, which is a pure bad trait. We can also see that he has a bit of, you know, spit on his face. I mean, I can probably think that this is some, mm, well, disability probably, I don't know, maybe nothing bad, just a normal brain deficiency, maybe something like Down syndrome or something like that. But still, it is a very bad trait if you are a ruler of a country. He's also amb ambidextrous, however you name that word, like this is a very un um, unpronounceable word, which basically means he is double-handed. He can use his left hand as good as he can use his right hand. And this is usually a very good skill because you get plus 10 combat skill, but is sadly over, yeah, over overseen, overlooked by the imbecile trait. He's also uncouth. Grooming and personal care are not exactly priorities of this character. Nothing bad directly. We are just not that, well, attracted, or at least women are not that attracted to us because of that. We are also a skilled fighter. This character possesses a certain talent for battle and sword play. This is of course a very good trait because this gives us plus, plus 20 combat skills. So we are very trained in our own ways of dealing with things, dealing with war. Oh yeah, and we are also a misguided warrior. It was a bit foreseen that we get that, but sadly, yeah, it could have been better. We are also ambitious. Ambitious characters work harder, make them better, making them better at everything. However, the drive to reach the top means that they tend to make power vessels. And we will do that. We will roleplay a guy who tries to make this empire, or this, well, duchy, as big as he can with his little disabilities, with his minor disabilities. And we are zealous. This character burns with religious fever and cannot tolerate heretics, infidels, or heathens. So this line will continue after our father, just that we are a bit more expanding, a bit more expanditory. We will see how this will go. I'm very, very um, interested because this can go either way. I mean, we are not that interest, uh, not that intelligent, not that um, suited for a ruler. But also not completely incapable. We have four marshal, we can do something with that, with the war focus. So we can get seven marshal and at least four combats and we can level that up. So we will see how this will go. We will see how this will go. But we don't go and we're not going to do any big major decisions, big game decisions. We will do that in the next episode. This is just a prologue where I show the character. So yeah, this character is very interesting. Even though he has a slight disability of his minor intellect. He's still someone who tries to reach the top, which I find very, very, um, yeah, you, you could. What was the word again? I find that very, very um, great, you know? It's, it's a great personality choice, personality that he has. How about his wife, his Countess Freduna of Dannenberg? She is only 14 years old, they just married recently. And she is a kind person, just and conscientious. She's, n she's not that fond of us because of the attraction to delicate, uncouth, and imbecile. We are delicate? I didn't even know that. Delicate. Delicate. I don't see it. Hmm. Yeah, we are not that. She's not that attracted to us because we are not that. Well, we don't have that big of a sex appeal to her. But still, she is from the family of Krummendick, a right now dying out dynasty, which will find their end in ourself. Which is interesting. Um, and I think she will be a good wife to us, a very pleasant wife, but she will not be that attracted to us, not that fond of us. Other than that, there are of course all of our sisters. Four in total. Sister Regenlind, who is right now a nun, residing at our court. She's also an imbecile, so yeah, we can kind of relate to her. But yeah, she's just a nun who 
don't it doesn't really have any sort of um yeah thing she do she does I mean she's just a nun at the court then we have Queen Tidburga of Bohemia of course this is m probably the biggest and influential character in our own mm, dynasty and our own family because she's married to the king of Bohemia one of the most powerful guys in the entire Holy Roman Empire well not anymore really but he will be in the future because we dragged him into a war which yeah was just a pure failure against Westphalia and uh, we have to see what we will do about that in the future uh, so yeah, she's very influential, Queen Tilburga. We will have to take a look, uh, take, have some sort of look at her. Then we have Radegund Lothar Udo's daughter. She was married to the Margrave Beringer, but he's already dead for yeah three years, so we have to probably remarry her to someone. I don't have anyone in, right now in planning, but we will see. And then for our last sister, we have Countess Rata Katharina of Ravensberg. Who is already a child, Hedwig Bernhard's daughter. Very interesting. Uh, she's married to Count Bernhard of Ravensberg, the former Duke of Westphalia slash um, slash Saxony, who is right now closely before a succession crisis because the titles were created three in total: Duchy of Westphalia, Angria, and Brunswick Lüneburg. So it could be that this entire duchy will split apart. I mean. The possibility is there. And my cousin Varin Hermans Sunu will be the um, future heir to this entire endeavor. And our uncle, Duke Hermann, is right now my yeah, my uncle. We will see. We will see. And oh, he has now a desire because he, des he created the Duchy of Angria. Uh, we will see how this will go. We will see how this will go. Of course, I want to keep Stade because this is right now the most profitable of my whole um regions hmm. um and then there is the bastard son count Ludger of altmark who is right now at the county of altmark of course someone we have to take a very close look at because he could if he wants to completely overtake the kingdom kingdom i say because he could completely overtake the mark graviate which of course would be bad bad we of course want to stay in power as a ambitious character and as a religious zealous person we can of course cannot just legitimize this bastard or let this legitimized bastard on our throne we have to do anything against it that would be one of our first drives at least all right this is our entire family and i think they just have yeah we have one nephew who is the prince of bohemia prince otter a very interesting character. He lives in Bohemia, of course. Mm, other than that, I don't think we have that many children. We have Hermann, who is mm, nothing, I think. Yeah, he isn't even the current heir to the throne. Then we have, of course, Hedwig. And Otta und Bohulslav, also a son. The heir to the county of Sass. Other than that, we don't really have that many family members left. At least male family members so we need an heir that will also probably be my first focus so i don't have to let this county go to count Ludger. Mm. all right oh i said um i have probably down syndrome no 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 i will take that back this is probably a, t a, a trait which is similar to um, how was his name again forrest gump forrest gump you know that um, that he's a guy with just low IQ. So yeah, we would be probably just a very happy and content character, but we are the exact opposite. We are an ambitious character. We will see how this will go. I don't want to take a focus right now. Of course, there is now um, the big elephant in the room, Duke Hermann the Zealot, the one who defended his realm against ourselves. Who will be a very, very interesting character when he dies, because then his realm will once again fall into the hands of a child, of Varin Hermans Sunu. So there is a possibility that we get Magdeburg back just like that, because the war wage, the war wages on, of course, against the Magdeburgans, against the Saxons, who we'll try to keep and hold on Magdeburg. Probably because this is a historical county 
and known to be the historical capital of the Holy Roman Empire of Emperor Otto I, the Great. Probably this is why they're so uh, eager to keep this little province. But yeah, this is all about him. Now, who is our current ruler? The old Emperor Kuno, who was set in place after his cousin, a very, uh, well, his distant relative, Heinrich III, died under suspicious circumstances. Nobody really knows why he died. And it is interesting to, well, argue what happened to him. We will never know. But Emperor Kuno of the Holy Roman Empire, of course, he is a somewhat capable ruler. Not that capable as Heinrich, of course. He was a fabulous ruler. And he's right now waging a war against Olaf the Black, against the um, Olaf the Third excommunication war. We will see how this will go. I am very, very, well, undecided. It doesn't look like the Emperor has that much capability to wage this war. And other than that, probably his son, the son of Heinrich, Prince Heinrich of the Holy Roman Empire, will inherit this throne. And Kuno, he's already also 50, so he could, of course, die now, and he's also uncrowned. Hmm. Not that great of a ruler, uh, I guess. Not that great of a ruler. Then there is, of course, our entire polit policies of our... Um, relations and we have to take a look at that because yeah we need more non-aggression pacts and that stuff which we cannot do right now well the one non-aggression pact I of course want to do is the one with Bretislav which is also why I have to send my new appointed counselor Vicho in there into Prague also we have some um, we have one guy I want to look at Chief Unvan of Mittelmark. He is my one vessel, the Chief of Mittelmark, which is a bit weird that the capital is still this backwater province. We have the ambition to build it out, but we never come to it because of our balance right now. Um, anyways, the Chief Unvan of Mittelmark. He is a just character, patient, humble, and groomed. Yes, yeah, somewhat the entire opposite of us. Oh god. We are, yeah, zealous, ambitious, and uncouth. That probably means we two will have some sort of rivalry against each other. I mean, he's also somewhat more capable capable than we are, the von Arnsberg family. Of course, this is very, very bad to have such an intelligent character in our court, in our vessel, and we will probably not like him. Okay, this is all. I mean, we have also our smaller guys, but they all never really play a big role. You know, Vichyo von Osnabrück, my chancellor, he's a bit dull. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Temperate, vigilant, and honest. Nah. He will do his job just fine. A competent guy. Competent. Competent. And we have one who is a masterful scholar. Brother Inmet. Yeah, he already made all of our counties Christian. Ca uh, well, Catholic at least. And my council is discontent, which is a bit... Which is not just a bit bad. It is very bad because then Chief Unvan, who has half of our troops, can... Try to figure some figure out some sort of um, yeah factional faction against us, and then there's of course these factions. But I will look into them when we come into the first episode of Mark Grave Bernhard the Second. And I think we talked about everyone, right? I think so. Yeah, we have just two uh, only two non-aggression packs we can send off. I will already send that one off to Bernhard of Ravensberg, our name's brother. Yeah, and other than that, we of course have to set course to paying off our debt, which we have in, in numbers, in very high numbers. But yeah, this is our new character, Margrave Bernhard II. We will see how he will do. Probably fine, hopefully fine. And I will see you all in the first episode of the second season. Until then.